hello everybody, I'm Xavier, and welcome to my third ever highway series, NC Provincial Lovin. This is where we're going to talk about the roads in North Carolina. North Carolina is a state DOT that is also super bad at signing control cities, and it's just like Pennsylvania, but they're only slightly better than them. But we're going to take a look at what they have to offer. Our first episode of the series is Xavier Ranks, the two-digit interstates, North Carolina edition. These are all of the interstates that Todd talked about, and we're going to rank them all in this video. Now before we begin, I must set a couple of reminders. First off, these roads are ranked by the signage quality and how control cities are signed. Remember that primary control cities are the main draw, but secondary control cities are also a major factor in determining the rank. And finally, the ranking system won't be the usual graded tier chart, for example, S, A, B, and so on but it will instead be a provincialism tier chart based on how provincial the highways are. You will see what it looks like at the end of the video. But first, we have been watching the Xavier 456 where new highway content comes out every week. If you like this kind of content, go ahead and smash the like button. And if you really like it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications, yeah. All right, I must remind you that you can request your exit or intersection down in the comments below. We're going to start our first highway of the series next week, which is I-140, which also includes NC-140. Alright, let's get into the rankings without any further ado, and I'm going to say number one in North Carolina is I-26. I-26 is in the west of the state, and they seem to do a really good job with it. So here we are in Asheville at I-40 and I-26 interchange, and we can see West I-26 and East 240 are signed for Asheville downtown and Johnson City. Johnson City is the main draw from here for I-26, and that is a good choice. And we can also see that East 26 and East 74 are signed for Hendersonville, although that is a secondary, but it's agreeable. And Spartanburg is our primary and main draw this way, and it is agreeable. As we can see here at US 19 and 23 and West 70, we can see that there is going to be a future 26 corridor, and it's signed for UNC Asheville and Weaverville. Although, those are where the U.S. highways are going, and I-26 hasn't been designated yet. So I could feel like Johnson City should be somewhere here, but I could kind of see the argument that it's not there. At minor interchanges, we do get Asheville and Johnson City signed between Asheville and Johnson City themselves, which are good. Here's a mileage sign heading southbound after Hendersonville, and we can see that there's Columbus on the top line and Spartanburg on the bottom line. That's okay. But this sign here is the main reason that I-26 is number one. We can see Spartanburg made its way onto the top line at 26 miles, coincidental. And Columbia is on the bottom line at 116 miles away. And the reason that this is number one is because North Carolina signs it right at the end of their state, but South Carolina does not sign Columbia at the beginning of their state. They just keep Spartanburg on the bottom line. So therefore, North Carolina has outclassed their southern neighbor, and this deserves a rare North Carolina W. All right, now we're gonna go to number two, which is I-87. Yeah, it's the one in quotations because it's not the real I-87. So here we are in the Raleigh area, and we can see North 87 is signed with East US 64 and 264 for Rocky Mount, Wilson, and Greenville. There are three control cities here, and each of these highways are heading somewhere this way. Rocky Mount is where 64 is going, Wilson and Greenville are where 264 is going. And here on this interchange, we can also see North 87 is signed for Rocky Mount, Wilson, and South 87 signed for Raleigh. Those are all the right choices. Although Greenville has somehow left the chat, so I don't know what's up with that. And here at a minor interchange, we can also see Raleigh and Wilson slash Rocky Mount being signed. No secondaries in sight. That is agreeable. All right, number three is going to be I-73. So here in Greensboro, we can see South 73 and 220 get signed for Ashboro. I mean, there's not much you can sign heading southbound from here, so... I guess Ashboro works. Here in Ashboro on US 64, we can see North 73 and West 74 get signed for Greensboro, that is great. And South 73 and East 74 and South 220 get signed for Rockingham. Again, there's not much you can sign, but you could make a case for a certain control city that I'm thinking of. I've heard it before being stated, and it's Myrtle Beach, but that might be a bit of an overstretch. I'm not even certain what should be signed here at this moment. 
here in Rockingham, we can see North 220, which will eventually get to I-73, is signed for both Ashboro and Greensboro. But unfortunately, this sign has recently been taken down, possibly because they want to keep Ashboro on the bottom line of this mileage sign. You know there is another borough that is bigger, and you can sign it, right? Greensboro! Here back in Greensboro, you can see South 73 signed for Ashboro. Once again, it's slightly agreeable. And North 73 and East 840 get signed for Martinsville, which is in Virginia and is where US 220 is going. And it's a bit agreeable, but I know that Roanoke is actually just a little further north of Martinsville, so maybe you can make a case for that. All right, number four is going to be I-74, which we just saw in the previous ranking. We're also going to include the U.S. highways that run on the future corridor of I-74, and we can see U.S. 74 here is signed for Laurenburg in Rockingham. I mean, it's okay that this is not an interstate just yet, but there are certain interstate portions in certain cities in North Carolina, so... I'm not even certain what should be signed here. Here in Laurenburg, we can see West is signed for Rockingham and East is signed for both Lumberton and Myrtle Beach. Well, Myrtle Beach is actually there because of US 501. And that is really a big draw. I'm cool with that. But I'm not so certain about Lumberton. It's where you meet on 95. But meanwhile, on another interchange, just in this same area, we can see West is signed for Rockingham again, but East is this time signed for Wilmington. It completely skips over Lumberton and goes for the bigger draw. That is cool to see. Here in the north of the state, we can see 74 is splitting with 77 and is signed for Mount Airy and Winston-Salem. I mean, the secondary is on there, but Winston-Salem is the main draw. Here in Winston-Salem, East 74 is getting signed for High Point. I mean, it's the last big city you're going to come across for a long time. So, I guess it's alright. And here at the split with I-73, we can see 74 West is signed for High Point and Winston-Salem. It's nice that we are mentioning two of the main cities in the triad, so that's nice to see. Here is US-52, and it's another part of the future corridor of I-74, and we can see it's signed north for Mount Airy Airport. Yeah, Mount Airy has an airport, but no, there's no passenger flights that go from there. That's confusing. You should definitely be signing Mount Airy and, like, Whitville, Charleston, Roanoke, whatever of those, but definitely not Mount Airy Airport. And here at a minor interchange, we can see that 74 is getting signed for Pilot Mountain. And this definitely concludes further proof that Mount Airy is definitely our primary. That is absolutely terrible. Sign Whitville, Roanoke. Charleston, whatever. But here we get 74 and 77 for Whitville in Mount Airy, so they've kind of made the decision for me. I mean, 77 beats 81 in Whitville and has the famous wrong way concurrency there. It's not the best choice, but it's not bad either. All right, number five is going to be I-77. We just saw I-77 in that last image, so we're gonna talk about it right now. Here in Charlotte, we can see 77 is getting a pull through for Columbia. And that is a great choice because it's the capital of South Carolina. But unfortunately, at the last minor interchange we get in the Charlotte area and in North Carolina, respectively, we can see South 77 is now getting signed for Rock Hill, which is a secondary and is literally just a few miles from this exit. What is wrong with you? Here at this interchange, we can see 77 is signed South for Charlotte and North for Statesville. Statesville is only there because of the meeting with I-40. Why would you sign a city where you're just meeting an interstate? That is so Pennsylvania of you to do, but you seem to succeed at it. Here in Statesville, 77 is getting signed for Withville and Charlotte. We talked about Withville earlier. But further up the road, when we meet with US-421, 77 is now getting signed north for Elkin. And we saw this a while back too in the secondaries video. And Elkin is another secondary, I'm gonna have to assume because Withville is probably signed. And then in Elkin, we can see 77 is now getting pulled through for Mount Airy. And 77 doesn't even touch Mount Airy. They're probably only signing it because, bro, you probably would want to take 74 to get back there, but Mount Airy is not significant. Sign Withville or something, you had it earlier. But here at a minor interchange, just not too far, from that pull through, we get Statesville and Withville. Sign Charlotte up on top, I swear. Number six is going to be I-85. Seems we're taking a big dip now. Here north of Charlotte, where 77 meets 85, we can see north is signed for Greensboro and south for Spartanburg. I mean, Spartanburg is where you meet I-26, but there is another bigger city further than Spartanburg that you can sign, and it's another green city, Greenville. 
you should sign Greenville over Spartanburg. However, once we move further south at a minor interchange, we can see now South is getting signed for Gastonia. Now they're being provincial as they can ever be. And then after Gastonia, we get Kings Mountain. And then after Kings Mountain, we get Gaffney. What is going on? 85 here in Charlotte gets signed for Concord, which is literally just one of Charlotte's suburbs. You should not be signing suburbs straight up on an interstate. But in Concord, then we get Kannapolis, which is, I believe, yet another suburb that is just like a few miles from Concord. And then, after Kannapolis, we get Lexington. Lexington is only signed there because of the split with I-285. I-285 is going to Winston-Salem while we continue to Greensboro, but... You should not be signing where we split, you should be signing Greensboro. Here in Greensboro, we get a pull through of East 40 and North 85 for both Durham and Raleigh, which are the correct choices. On a minor interchange, we get Greensboro and Burlington. Burlington is a sort of major city in its own right, but it's not any bigger than Durham. Here in Durham, we get South 885 and East US 70 for Raleigh, and North 85 and 15 are both signed for Oxford and Petersburg. So you're throwing a North Carolina city on there, Oxford, but Petersburg is somehow the main draw. Petersburg is only where 85 ends and fills into 95. You know where 95 is going? Richmond. Sign Richmond here. But then at a minor interchange, we see Oxford being a secondary, but there is yet another secondary on here, Henderson, which is literally just a few miles from Oxford. What are you doing? Do not sign that or Petersburg, sign Richmond. All right, we're getting down to the drags now. Number seven is I-40. Here at the very first exit in North Carolina, heading eastbound, East 40 is signed for Waynesville. And why are they signing Waynesville? Because of US 276. No, sign Asheville. But once we're in Waynesville, we can see Newport getting signed instead of Knoxville. And Eastbound is signed for Asheville finally. That's what I can agree with. Viewers of Control City Freaks shouldn't even be surprised at this. East 40 getting pulled through for Hickory and Biltmore Estate. Biltmore Estate is just an attraction here in Asheville. And Hickory is not a big city. I mean, it's medium sized, but Winston-Salem. Winston-Salem is big, but Hickory isn't even our primary. In fact, it's not even on this mileage sign. We got Black Mountain 17 in Statesville at 104. Unsurprising that Statesville would be the primary here because of the meeting with I-77, but even still, Winston-Salem. But guess what? More secondaries are bound. We get Marion, we get Morganton, we get Hickory. Once we're in Statesville, we get 40 signed for Winston-Salem and Asheville, both directions. And here in Winston-Salem, we're getting 40 East Greensboro and West Statesville. No, not Statesville, Asheville. Here in Raleigh, we're getting 40 East pulled through for Benson and Wilmington. I mean, Wilmington is the main draw from here, but Benson is only signed there because of the meeting with I-95. Benson's small, and it's a big meme within the North Carolina provincialism shtick. Here at this interchange, we're getting 40 West Raleigh, that's good, but East 40 is now getting signed for Benson and Smithfield. Smithfield's actually there for US 70, but now 40 is only getting signed for Benson. No, Wilmington. Once we're in Benson at the I-95 interchange, now we get 40 signed for Wilmington. That's okay, but in between Wilmington and Benson, we're getting Benson and Newton Grove. What are you doing? Heading the other way, when we start in Wilmington, we get 40 signed for Benson and Raleigh. Glad you put Raleigh on there, but take Benson off of it. Now let's skip all the way back to Asheville, where we're going westbound, and we can see West 40 is now signed for Canton and Knoxville. Once again, they're throwing yet one more thing that we can get in North Carolina, and Knoxville is at least the main draw. But, at a minor interchange before Canton, what do we get? Canton! Canton! We're only meeting US 23 there, but still, Knoxville! And last place, I'm sure you probably saw this one coming, it's I-95. Here in the south, at the very first exit, we're getting Florence and Lumberton signed. Florence is the southbound control city, and that's where you're meeting US 20 in South Carolina, but Lumberton. Lumberton is only where you're meeting the future I-74 corridor, and that's not good. Fayetteville. Fayetteville is big, 
Why aren't you signing it? It's like the biggest city we're gonna come across in the whole state on this interstate. My god, you're treating this bad already. Here in Lumberton, we're getting 95 signed south for nothing, for whatever reason, but 95 is now signed north for Fayetteville, that is good. And in Fayetteville, we're getting 95 signed for Benson and Lumberton! Why are you still signing Lumberton here? That should be something else. And 95 North Benson? Absolutely freaking not. At this point, it should be Richmond. Richmond is the next biggest city you're going to come across at this point. I do not care about where we're meeting another interstate. But then in a minor interchange, now we're getting Fayetteville, that's good, for South. But Dunn. Dunn is actually closer to here than Benson. But still, none of those should be signed in their own right. But then we still get Fayetteville South at another minor interchange and we get Benson signed. No more Benson. Then further up, we get Dunn and Smithfield. No Dunn, sign Fayetteville, you had it on earlier. And Smithfield, no. Richmond, here in Benson, off of the exit of I-40 for I-95, we get north for Rocky Mount and Smithfield. Those are the other way around. Don't sign Smithfield here, sign Richmond. You can sign a secondary here, which is Rocky Mount, that's good. For a secondary, at least. But sign Richmond, and south is signed for Benson and Fayetteville. Fayetteville is the main draw here, that is good. Here in Smithfield, we are getting 95 south for Benson, which is not even that far. It's like a few miles down, Fayetteville. And 95 north signed for Wilson. I mean, it's different, it's something we haven't gotten, but it's still close by. Keep signing Richmond. And here in Wilson is the only place we get a mention of Richmond on the highway itself. We get a pull through for I-95 for Richmond right here, and it's the only thing that North Carolina does good with this highway northbound. Why won't you do that for the rest of the frickin' interstate? Here at this interchange with 587, we're getting 95 South Benson once again, and 95 North for Rocky Mount. I mean, at this point, it's the biggest city that you're gonna come across in the state, but still, Richmond! Here in Rocky Mount, 95 is getting signed for Fayetteville and Richmond. Finally, good control cities for once. You should have been doing this all along. Here north of Rocky Mount, we're getting Rocky Mount signed southbound. I mean, it could be okay, but Fayetteville is probably more acceptable. But north is now getting signed for Roanoke Rapids and Weldon. Those are the last few places we're going to come across in North Carolina. You are showing your true colors with this. But here in the very north of the state, we get Rocky Mount signed. But here in Northbound gets signed for Emporia and Richmond, which are both in Virginia. And at least Richmond is finally making an appearance on a minor interchange. But then, once we reach the end of the state, we get Rocky Mount, but now we just get Emporia. Why just Emporia? And so apparently what I can conclude from NC dot is that Richmond does not exist. All right, so now it's time to take a look at the tier chart for this entire thing. Zoom out so we can see it. All right, so here we've got our provincialism chart and it is different from the graded tier chart. Here in the bad tier, which is the top of the list, we get 26 and I-87. In the worst tier, we have I-73. In the even worst tier, we've got I-74 and I-77. And then we've got a tier called Absolutely Atrocious. And we got I-85 stuck in there because of a whole bunch of secondaries. And lastly, in the <laughs> tier, we've got I-40 and I-95. 40 and 95 are the interstates that North Carolina treats the worst. All right, that is it for the first episode of NC Provincial 11. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the first highway video of this series, I-140 slash NC-140. You can still request for that. Alright, I'm Xavier, and until then, may peace be with you.